Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at West Ealing and that's the Branch Line train to Greenford. Today is another episode of Branch Line Britain and we're going to do the West Ealing to Greenford branch. What we're going to do, we're going to walk to Greenford looking at the stations on the way and any bridges and anything else that's interesting really and then we'll get the train back. So the train terminates in the bay platform there. What's interesting is um, before Crossrail and all that became a thing, the trains actually used to come off the branch just up there and run all the way through to Paddington, but with the extra services on the Great Western Main Line, there just wasn't any spare parts, so they created the bay platform. But what's also happened here is there's recently been a big station upgrade with a new ticket hall station, I believe now has ticket barriers. So I thought what we'll do, we'll have a look at the new and the old stations before we start walking up the Greenford branch. It's quite an interesting little branch line. It's um, quite nice that the 165s, the Great Western 165s, still have like a little enclave in London because um, all their other work has gone. Of course, Chiltern Railways still use class 165, so there's 39 of them coming in and out of London Marylebone, but they don't seem to have any books work in and out of London Paddington. They still work all the Thames Valley branches, so they work the branches to Marlow, to Windsor and to Henley. There's a cross rail train that's not stopping. Three, four, five, 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 two. So not every cross rail train stops here. That's West Ealing Station there. The new station building that is. The old one, I think I'll get a better view when we get to the top of the um, new footbridge. And the weight trows there. I was thinking, well, there's quite a few Waitrose I can think of that are next to railway lines, such as um, Sunningdale, Rickmansworth. Rickmansworth is great for watching trains. There goes the branch train, just as well I wasn't catching it. I've had to have run ahead and lost it, but we're not getting it. We're going to walk to Greenford and then we'll catch it back. So there's the old Greenford station just there. So that's all now closed. Um, I'm going to walk that way around because my plan is, um, well, there's a uh, I'll let you see it from this way. The Crack Express passing through. So, there is a footbridge across the, the main line and the Greenford branch. Sorry, I'm very silhouetted in that view. So we're gonna go and walk across that. So when we get to here, from this angle, we get quite a nice view looking down on the set of ticket barriers. So you can see the whole of the new station building and um, then we're gonna. What we'll do? We're going to have a quick look before we go out. We'll go and have a look at the um, at the bay platform, which we're then going to finish up on. So that's your set of ticket barriers just there. So previously the station didn't have ticket barriers, um, but it has now. And this is where we're going to finish. So I'm going to go back up there and uh, show you a few things. Sorry, I'm silhouetted again. Show you a few things of the Greenford branch along the way. And eventually we'll get the train and end up back here. So here we are outside the new West Ealing station building. As you can see I haven't quite finished the road so the road's currently closed to traffic. Funny how the, um, the fence around the road is purple and a very similar colour to um, Crossrail or the Elizabeth line. Is that a coincidence or is it just that colour? That weird noise you can hear is them putting the shutters down. Right, well, let's go and have a look at the old station building, which has just closed. Um, so when I've come to Ealing Broadway before, sorry, not Ealing Broadway, we're at West Ealing, aren't we? When I've come to West Ealing before, um, this is where I would have come in and out. I have come here a few times because um, it was a station I'd sometimes come to to watch trains. And um, I have you come here just on the Greenford branch. I also came on, talk about this more lately, later, but there's a Chilton Railways parliamentary train so I've done that a few times. So here, as it says, it still says West Ely. This is effectively a disused station building. I'm not sure if there's any plans for it. Maybe they could like make it into a cafe or a bar or a pub or something. But the one thing I really like is it's quite a modern building. It's how they put um, the BR double logos out of bricks in the main station building. So I don't know what the plan is for the old station building. It'd be a shame if it just gets knocked down. So maybe they'll find a new use for it. I don't know. I'm now going to walk around the corner past the Waitrose we're going to go ahead and find that footbridge which will take us over the main line and the branch line. 
I'm just walking down the streets, um, the railway line's just behind us, and this footpath, which is going to take us over the main line and the branch line, is just here. I think I once heard it's known locally as Jacob's Ladder, um, or am I getting confused with someone else? I know quite often footbridges like this over railways are sometimes known as Jacob's Ladder, so um, there's a possibility this one is, but then maybe it's not. It's quite an old bridge though. I do like these old iron bridges, looking a bit worse for wear, but um, you know it's nice to see one traditional footbridge over the railway still in place. So as we come up here, the views start to open out. So you've got the main lines here. Over there, that's the plaza works. Is that a train coming? I think so. The new Heathrow Expresses, which um, replaced the class 332s, which unfortunately have all been scrapped now, except um, three carriages of Unit 001. They've survived, so if we look across here, you can just see the branch line over there. So that's where we're heading for. And if you look that way, you can just see West Ealing Station, where we came from. So we're now going to cross the bridge. So now we're half, well not quite halfway, but you get a better view through the mesh. So West Ealing Station is just there. I can just see Hanwell and Iphorn Station as well in the distance, which is... Um, Probably the nicest station on this line. I think it's a really nice station. Oh look, this is better. So get a better view here because there's no mesh because we're not actually over the wires now. So there is West Ealing and you can see the bay platform which we're going to ride into later. And here, here you get a perfect view of the branch going off. So it's actually a double track branch. Quite a lot of branch lines aren't, but this one is. Plaza works. And I can see another train. Or is he stopping? There's a train up there. I'm not sure if he's stopping it. And well, um, there is, while we're here, there is another side of the triangle just over there behind the plaza works, which um, I've never been on because there's no scheduled passenger trains, but you know, maybe one day um, we could do that line. Not sure when, if well, there'd have to be some sort of rail tour or diversion, but you know, you never know. Occasionally, do get the opportunities to do rare bits of track, um, as I'll Talk, tell you later on when we get to the other end. Yeah, I think that train stops at Hanwell, so I'm not going to wait and see that. Let's go down, see where the footpath goes. And just round the corner up there is the first station on the branch, Straight and Green. So we'll go and have a look at that station. When we get there, we might start to realise why um, the line, firstly, hasn't been electrified and still only uses two car units. But that will all be revealed when we get further up the line. So I'm now going to walk down these steps and follow the footpath and find out where it goes. That noise you just heard was some points changing. Well, this is Drayton Green, this area of common land I'm crossing. But it's the first station on the branch line that's called Drayton Green. So this is where Drayton Green Station takes its name from, this green here. Drayton Green. I'm going to continue on out to the road up there and a short way along there we'll find Drayton Green Station. I found Drayton Green Station. Here it is, just down here. So I'm up on the road at the moment and um, looking down on the station. So as I was saying about the fact that the line's not electrified and it currently only has two car trains, here's your answer. See how short these platforms are? And because you've got the junction literally there so trains go that way to West Ealing and trains could go that way to join the Great Western Main Line. There really is um, not a lot of choice for extending the platforms. Maybe you could, you could certainly extend that one under the bridge, um, but you couldn't really extend this one without rebuilding the bridge. So that's really why it um, still has to use two coach trains and there's no um, AC electric multiple units that are two carriages so can't really be electrified unless they came up with a new form of um, AC electric multiple unit. There's another branch, the Marlow branch, which has the same problem and that's why that hasn't yet been electrified. So what I'm going to do, um, I will put my face covering on, I'm going to go down on the platform just for completeness, but before we do that I want to cross the road and show you something as soon as I can get across the road. Too many, there's a be a crossing here. Right, there we go, get across. Another unusual feature of this line 
is that. It's a tunnel of sort. Well, it's not really a tunnel, but technically it is a tunnel. It's about a quarter of a mile long. It's where they built a housing estate over the railway line. So it's an artificial tunnel. And it was something they talked about doing a couple of years ago in various other places, building loads and loads of houses over railway lines, which in some ways, yes, it would free up a lot of land, but then it would certainly make the train journeys very, very boring. And as for building things over railway lines, creating these artificial tunnels, OK, that is literally a concrete box but when you actually try and create a tunnel it doesn't always go according to plan as um, the people of Gerard's Cross know all too well if you want to know the story of what happened at Gerard's Cross have a look at the link on screen now I explain it in that video about the Tesco value tunnel problem but anyway I'm gonna have a quick look down on the station platform and then we're gonna continue our walk well here we are down the London end of the platform at Drayton Green Turning around, have a look, there's the junction. You can see towards West Ealing it says 15 and 20, so a local haul train has to go 15 miles an hour. The DMUs can go 20. And if you're going towards the west, you're allowed to go 25 miles an hour. So the trains that do regularly use this side of the curve would be the HS2 construction trains, which um, I was going to see usually on my lockdown walk. Um, in the Buckinghamshire area, I'd go and see them. So they would come from various places such as Tiverington in, in Gloucestershire or Westbury. They'd come along off the Great Western Main Line, take that curve there, and they'd go up the branch and join the Chiltern Main Line at South Ryslip. We're now going to go and we're going to have to walk over the top of that tunnel. So let's continue on towards Castle Bar Park. So we are literally on top of the Greenford branch. It almost has a bit like the feeling of walking along a disused railway that's been turned into a housing estate. But on this occasion, the railway isn't disused. It's just beneath my feet. So it's um, from looking at the way the development goes, if you look, you've got cars parked down there and you've got the flats on each side and then the same on the other side. So basically the tracks are under here. So it's, it's just a base, a big box like that that they've put the road on and then the cars as I, down there are literally down at the natural ground level and um, the flats themselves their foundations are on the natural ground level so um, it's I don't know if I like the idea or not I think here yeah, it's all right because it's a one-off um, and I suppose it's quite a good use of space but personally when I go on the train I like to enjoy the view out the window um, but I can live with this one being like this so I'm going to continue on I'm going to hopefully find the other end of the tunnel I was going to try and show you the southern end of the tunnel but I couldn't where I'm going to be able to show you the northern end at this stage I don't know but I shall know in the next few seconds one thing I think is rather amusing is there's bus stops here a bus stop over there buses literally run on top of the train I think that's quite funny that there's could be a, you could be sitting on a bus and down beneath you there's a train going along or vice versa um, I can't think of anywhere obviously buses cross railway lines I can't think anywhere where you could literally get a bus and you're going along the same alignment as the railway only a few feet higher I suppose in central London you could sort of argue you get it the other way around where you know you've got the subsurface lines they're running beneath the street and you could be on a bus going along above but I should think I think this is pretty unique this um, tunnel stroke housing estate stroke railway line I don't think there's anywhere else quite like it um, not in the UK anyway there might be in other countries if we come to here I'm guessing this is probably the end of the tunnel so my hopes are we're going to see the railway line again yeah there we are, I can see it not only can I see the railway I can also see Castle Bar Park Station so there is the railway line and we get a look at the tunnel so um, you can sort of see the box shape so um, how can I show you to get past these buddliers is it going to be as easy to if you look over there you can sort of see how there's literally ground beneath there so it is basically a box it's a bit like what it reminds me of is when I was little I had a Brio train set and the Brio train set had a tunnel it's just like that with then houses each side of it I'm now going to continue on down here because we now know that Castle Bar Park Station 
is quite close. When those flats are finished, those people are going to get a good view of the railway. This is Castle Bob Park Station. Let's have a look. Never been to this station before, so there's um, the giant Brio Tunnel. Up there, I can see the train coming. I'm going to have to wait and see the train. Um, so yeah, fairly plain station. Although it looks like it does have a ticket office, it's, it's staffed on a mon Monday to Friday from 7 till 10. So you can actually buy a ticket here. And then there's the Oyster card readers. So there's no ticket barriers um, on any of the intermediate stations on this line. I'm pretty sure there isn't. And um, well, I'll know that by the time we get to the end. Interesting. I just saw the light went green. So there's only one train that goes up and down. As I mentioned, there are good trains using this line. That made my day, seeing that goods train come through. So that was um, going from Calvert to Westbury. It was an empty HS2 construction train. So that will take the curve at uh, Drayton Green. I was saying about what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go over the bridge to the other side because the passenger train is due. This is probably the announcement for it. This side for Greenford over the bridge to Ealing, but we're not actually getting a train. I'm just going to have the pleasure of watching the train pass through the station. Now I'm going to continue my walk and then um, I get the relaxing bit afterwards taking the train back. Get another look at the uh, Brio Tunnel. I'm going to always call that now at the Brio Tunnel. And look how straight the line is. I can see literally dead straight all the way up there. So, um, at least I know my walk's going to be fairly straight. I think from here, I did actually have to come over this side. I mean, I could have gone that way. I'm going to go across this little green area here and then um, follow a lot of footpaths alongside the railway. That's the weirdest place to put a station sign, just there in the bushes so, um, you know, the birds in the trees, they can look and they can know they're at Castle Bar Park. I'm going to now wait and see the passenger train arrive. So, leaving Castle Bar Park station behind, I'm going to continue my walk now. I'm going to go to South Greenford. That's the final intermediate station. Then we're going to get to Greenford, where we can take the train back to West Evening. This almost feels like I could be on a very rural country branch somewhere, walking down a path like this. But you might just be able to hear a bit of talking, a bit of noise coming from over there. That is the Trailfinder Sports Club. Now that was originally the Great Western Railways Sports Club where their staff could play various different forms of sports. But now it's just a private sports club. Yeah, it looks like um, there's a lot of people whether they're going to watch a football match. Um, there's a lot of people out there. So yeah, Trailfinder Sports Club, that's what that is. There's another, what looks like um, another sports field there. The railway is just the other side of that. So I'm going to continue on down here.
past, um, there's some flats up here, some tower blocks, we're going to go past them, we're going to have to cross the River Brent, so I'm quite interested to see if the railway goes over a viaduct over River Brent or if there's going to be a culvert, and then our next station will be South Greensford, so I'm going to continue now down towards those tower blocks over there. I've just walked past the tower blocks, there's three of them, although one's hiding, and they're named after birds, they're called Falcon House, Kestrel House and Dunlin House. I mentioned we were coming to find the River Brent. Here is the River Brent, and as I was saying, I was intrigued to know, um, was it just going to be a small culvert or would there be a viaduct to take the line over the River Brent? Well, we actually have quite a, a nice viaduct here, not particularly high viaduct, but it's got some really quite wide arches. So what I'm going to do, I will be going up that Lime Avenue. Is it Lime Avenue? Maybe it isn't. It looks like um, Poplar Avenue, I think it was. Um, looks like a nice path. I'm going to go up there, but I just want to walk under the viaduct, just because I can. I've been over this viaduct many times. Never, ever have I been under it. And it's actually called, if you look at the network rail notice, it's called Brent Viaduct. If I go here, yeah, look, we can go, here's a path underneath it. How many arches? There's one, two, three, four, five, possibly five arches. And there's the River Brent itself. So five, I think five arch viaduct over the River Brent. So um, when I'm sitting on the train, I'll be looking out to see that view. So I'm now going to continue down that Poplar Avenue towards South Greenford Station. So oh, that's the River Brent, and this is the Poplar Avenue which we're going to follow. The viaduct is there, hiding in the trees. It looks like quite a nice park here. I didn't know this was here, but look, there's a lake with a path around it. Um, of course, you've got the railway to one side, so, you know, I think this is um, somewhere I've never been before, and I already quite like it. I'm going to continue this way, under what I'm pretty sure are mainly poplar trees towards South Greenford. I've now passed under the railway to the other side. It was like a wind tunnel in that bridge and it started raining so I didn't show you that bit but we are now on the west side of the railway. So the railway is over there somewhere not too far. As you can see more fields, sports fields, over there is Perivale Golf Course. So considering this is an urban branch line, it has a rather um, rather rural feeling to it, which I think is quite nice and um, it's a pleasant walk. It's more interesting than I expected it to be. I just thought I was literally going to be walking down, you know, residential road after residential road after residential road, but I was wrong. Is anything but like that? Not far now to South Greenford Station, so just going to keep walking and soon I shall be at South Greenford. That's the very, very busy and noisy Western Avenue. Let's get somewhere quieter, like South Greenford Station, for example. We'll walk up here to the platform, at, or one of the platforms at South Greenford Station. Um, I'll visit this one today because, well, it will also be today. When I pass back on the train, I'll be on the other side. So I thought I might as well come up onto this side. Looks like it's unstaffed. So, so far, the only intermediate station to be staffed was Castle Bar Park, and that was only for three hours on a weekday morning. So, what have we got up here? So, there's your Oyster Card readers. There's a train to Greenford. Um, so, it's 17.37 now. Train to Greenford's at 11 minutes past six. So, um, well, I'll say I'll end up getting, when it goes back, that one back, but it's the same train all day. So. There's your Oyster Guard readers. This is a steep old stone. Up here onto the platform. In the rain. It's really starting to rain now. Hopefully the sun will come out soon. So here's the very straight track. So I can even still see that Brio tunnel down at um, Castle Bar Park. So here you are. This is the station. Again, quite small. And um, not a lot going on. I'm going to not wait for a train, I'm just going to stand in here, just 
just um, not wait for it to stop raining perhaps, just wait for it to rain, wait for the rain to die down a bit and then I've got about three quarters of a mile to Greenford. I said I was going to wait for it to stop raining but I soon got bored of that so I'm just going to get on with a walk. Quite an impressive bridge over the Western Avenue. Now from here to Greenford we're going to follow the Capital Ring which is one of the walks which circumnavigates London. There is the London Loop which uh, I have done about um, two thirds of but I haven't got around to doing it. I'm just One day I will do all of the Capital Ring, all of the London Loop and I'll make a video series on that but right now we just happen to be using the Capital Ring because they are sometimes quite a good way to get from A to B, just a nice pleasant path to follow and um, take you away from you know busy roads like this. That said, if you want to brave the noise of the busy road, quite a good place to see a train. If one of those goods trains had come along, it'd be quite a good place to have seen it. Up over there, that hill, that's Horsenden Hill. I'm not going up there today, but when I eventually do the Capital Ring, we'll go up there then, because the Capital Ring will take you over the top of Horsenden Hill and um, on right round, round London. So, where are we going now? You can go down here. Oh yeah, there's, um, there's a Capital Ring sign here. It just says on this one, via footbridge. They normally tell you how far it is to places, but here, we've just got, look, Capital Ring, via footbridge. Capital Ring, thing of a, a ring around Big Ben. The camera won't pick it out, but on the other side, I can just see the sign. It says Greenford Station, three quarters of a mile. And in the opposite direction, it says Osterley Lock, four and a half miles. So um, definitely not doing that today, but we will one day. So Capital Ring, I think it takes us down here and uh, hopefully away from the Western Avenue as soon as possible, really. Um, yeah, just up here I can see the signs. I just had to come over that great big bridge there. So yeah, Western Avenue, rain. The rural part of the walk's finished, but at least I'm following the Capital Ring, so I think it'll be, you know, all right. Looking forward to getting to Greenford though and getting on the train and going back. So, I'm just going to now follow the Capital Ring. I'm not too far from Greenford Station now, but before we get there, i just got to show you this monster of a lighter. Now, the branch isn't a such on there. What you see nearest to here would be the... Um, central line to West Ryslip and then if you look at this arch once you get past this tree you can see it's effectively filled in that's because there's a slope in there the, the branch trains go up a slope in the middle of the two central lines to a bay platform which we shall see shortly and then this bridge here this carries the old Great Western North Main Line you know up to High Wycombe etc. So when steam trains from Paddington went to Birkenhead, they'd have passed over this bridge. So um, not many um, long distance trains, if any, would pass over that section of the bridge. So there would have been Greenford Main Station, which would have been, we'll see when we get there, but on these tracks, that closed in 1963. Greenford itself, the station opened in 1904, um, after the branch had opened. But then the London Underground wasn't added until as late as 1947. So I'm going to continue on down there towards Greenford Station. So here we are at Greenford Station. So the branch itself is um, 2 miles and 40 chains long. So not a particularly long branch, but I'd say my walk has probably been about 3 miles to went across the road. We're going to go into the station and um, get the train back. But before we get the train back, there's something quite exciting at this station, which um, I really like. So we should see that any, any minute now, once we get across the road. First going to the station. So further, this is further down that huge viaduct complex I was telling you about. Now, if we come in here. Quite a nice... Uh, Art Deco style station. It's not a Charles Holden one, but it is an Art Deco style station. And through here, through the ticket barriers. I've got a travel card. Um, I've been doing other things in London before I did this, so um, I haven't actually got to buy 
a ticket. So we come into here, and this is more brutal. Let's have a look at that. But the exciting thing is the lift. I'm just going to show you the escalator first. It used to be the last station to have wooden escalators. So as you can see, there's only one escalator, and then there's stairs. It's also, as far as I'm aware, it's the only tube station where you get on an escalator and go up to the platforms. Now, this lift is exciting. Is it working? This lift is, to me, it's a form of railway. It's an inclinator. Have a look up there. It isn't vertical. Standing clear of the doors. This lift isn't vertical, so it goes up an incline. There's not many of these around. There is one by the Millennium Bridge in London, although I've never ever seen it work. And there will be some of these on Crossrail when it opens, so that's a future video coming. Well, there'll be definitely videos on Crossrail when it opens. But this is just exciting. It's a, so it's, to my books, this is a funicular railway. This isn't just a lift, it's a form of railway, so I really like this. I'm just coming to the top, let you look down. I'll tell you what, I have been on one similar to this, and it had multiple stations. Was at the Football Museum in Manchester. Have a look at the link on screen now. You'll see one of the videos um, I did on that. It's one of my early videos. Um, so yeah, that's where we've just come up. We've come up there, and we're now going to go out onto the platforms and just fall five inches. Now onto the platforms. I'm going to be able to show you what I was explaining about the bridges back there. So this is the platform of Greenford. So you can see it's an island platform. That's the central line towards London, that's the central line towards West Ryston. You actually get quite a nice view up here, all over West London. Now, I'm silhouetted again, I'll turn the camera this way for a moment. As for where the Greenford branch terminates, well that's another fun thing. It terminates just here, in the middle of the two platforms. So, this is where our train's going to arrive. So that's for Greenford main station. It'd have been down there somewhere. If um, one of those HS2 construction trains came along, we would see that passing just down there. The other very exciting thing is this station still has semaphore signals controlling the junction down there. So the other train I mentioned does use this line. The only other passenger service, there's a Chilton Railways passenger service. Um, I'm not sure the exact time, at some point in the morning, from South Ryslip to West Ealing. And if you get on that South Ryslip, you get to travel along this track and you'll go, at those signals, they'll take you down under the complex and then it runs non-stop to West Ealing. So it's like an express service, except there's only one a day. I did it a few years ago and um, it was quite fun. I took my girlfriend on it and even she enjoyed it. Although I told her that, um, not many people use that train, which is true. Usually only one or two people turn up. In, if you counted us, there were seven other passengers. Um, so five other passengers, there were seven of us. So it was quite busy, but that was quite um, an exciting trip. I'll have to do a video on that one day. So as I come down to the end of the platform, this is where our train's gonna arrive. If you look up there, you can see the two central line viaducts either side. There, there was also a, a triangle on that side. Now I did that once very early in the morning um, no, it wasn't very early in the morning, I'm thinking of someone else, because I've done so many triangles early in the morning. A few years ago, Great Western Railway, they, with the sleeper train, did a very exciting thing, where they ran um, just these passenger trains in and out of Paddington, just purely for enthusiasts to get the locos for haulage and get the rare track. So you travel out of Paddington, it came up the north main line that's now closed, took that curve, down the Greenford branch, and back into Paddington. So, um, and, and the same day, they ran a passenger service on the um, Colnebrook branch, the stub of the Staines West branch, Central Line train pulling in. I should do things like that again. Um, anyone from, from Great Western, if you're watching, you know, that was fun. Do, please do that again. I know obviously you can't do that loop anymore because the track's closed, but um, yeah, do things like that again. Um, perhaps run a 165 down the Colnebrook branch because um, it was a 150 last time. Anyway, I'm going to wait for the train to arrive and then we're going to enjoy the trip back to West Eden.
So here we are on the branch train, and there's a central line train coming in. So um, what's interesting is so the line finishes here, but there we have an underground train going further out away from the centre of London. It must be the only place in London where a network rail line terminates and a London underground line goes further out. I can't think, I mean, could have said that perhaps about Barking with a gospel out to Barking line, but now that's part of London Overground. Um, it's all, you know, metro network as such, but this effectively is a branch line. I mean, you could argue, yes, it's part of a wider net metro network, but, you know, it's a bit kind of self-contained. It's, it's like a national rail enclave of, um, you know, in the metro area, and I like it. It's different, and um, there's not many other people on this train. It's quite a luxury, really, for a branch line. In fact, it's double track. You know, most of the way. It's only this section here that's single track, but then, um, as I said, the goods trains which use the branch line don't use this section of track. I'll be able to show you in a moment. If we look out the window, so you've got the central line there. So the central line, as I said, it climbs up onto those viaducts. We're starting to go down. The central line's going up. And if you were to get the train from West Rysfit, no, sorry, South Rysfit, under this concrete viaduct, so we're surrounded by concrete viaducts on each side. I'll show you where you'll come through. We just, yeah, so you'd come under that girder bridge, I could just see the signal box through there, and you'd come on that section of track which is joining us now, and that, that's what the good trains which use this line use and we've now passed under the um, the West Rysett line of central line. The other side of the triangle would have been just here behind this building. They did quite often, they used to turn HSTs when they're based at Old Oak Common, they used to send them round up up um, the Park Royal line and they'd take this curve just to turn them round and sometimes you'd be on a central line train and you'd look out and you'd see an HST and you'd think, well, what's that doing? Where's that going? But it just, it'd be going very slowly because it's such a um, sharp curve. So yeah, they used to use to turn them, but now the line's closed. I'm not sure if there's actually even any track at this side um, of the of, of the junction. Uh, or if, if, they've, if they've lifted it, which is for soon find out, they might have left the stub in for any um, construction trains in connection with HS2. That's where I walked all along there. I said it was so rural. I walked along the footpath along there. Oh, there's the line, look. <laughs> Just going off there. So I did want to do that section of track, so I'm quite proud of that. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to um, enjoy the views over the rooftops of West London as we travel back to West Evening. So here we are, we are back at West Ealing. Our little branch train has brought us into the bay platform. I'm now going to wait for a crossrail train to take me back to London. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you're ever out this way, you know, why not come for a ride on, on the branch line? It has almost like, um, now 165 has disappeared from the Great Western Main Line, but they're still holding these enclaves. It has a bit of heritage feel. Perhaps they should paint this one in Network South East livery, just, just for fun. Someone from Great Western is watching, why don't you paint it in Network South East livery? That said, Chilton, you could paint one of yours in Network South East livery, but anyway, maybe one day we'll see that livery again. So I'm now going to wait for a crossrail train back to Paddington. Hope you enjoyed this video. You know, if you're out this way, why not come and um, enjoy this line for yourself? Or perhaps enjoy the walk I did. The only thing I will say is there's no Sunday service, so um, we can't do it. We can do the walk on a Sunday. Um, West Ealing Green for stations are open on Sunday, but there's no Sunday service. There's a crossrail train that's not stopping. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from the Bay platform at West Ealing, thank you very much. Track Express passing through. So, um, yeah, as I was saying, please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. The engine's just shut down. From the bay platform at West Ealing, where it's suddenly gone a lot quieter. Um, thank you very much. Goodbye.